Well, look who wants to get in on the money grab, guys. <laughs> I want to see all your money. Excuse me? Show me where the money lives. It's HOAs, AKA the cartel, AKA the mafia, AKA the gang. <laughs> Come on, boys. We got a job. They will shake you down like no other. Who likes HOAs? I don't. Do you? I, everybody that I know dislikes HOAs for their shakedown tactics, and it's no different in this situation, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Just get rid of them. HOAs were there to protect your, your property values, but instead, they annoy you. <laughs> instead, they sue you. You're gonna sue us? You don't sue us, we sue you. Instead, they put liens on your house. Instead, they foreclose on your home. <laughs> you have no power here. And you didn't think that banks were gonna make all the money. You didn't think cities were gonna make all the money in taxes. You didn't think all of these entities, contractors would get in on this inflation and the good old cartel would say, you know what? We're gonna be advocates of the homeowners and we're not gonna rake you over the coals. <laughs> Uh, no, HOAs got their hands together. They said, we gonna make some money. My name is Orlando. Welcome to the channel, guys. Please hit that like and subscribe button. It really, really does help out the channel. Check out the description. I have a course for real estate investing and YouTube, but let's get into this, guys. Cause I got an email from one of my subscriber viewers and it says here, Orlando, I bought a house two years ago and this HOA now wants 20K from us. My value of my home went down 40k and now the HOA wants this. I live in Austin. Can you give me some advice? Um, get a lawyer. <laughs> that would be my advice, but we're gonna really hit home on this. We're not gonna talk about you buying a home two years ago and then being $40,000 under because I've done plenty of videos about that. But we're gonna talk about these HOAs, guys, and it's an important deal. What people don't really understand is that HOAs will really, they will drain you of your money and you will be caught into a situation like one of my subscribers and have to pay 20K and not understand why and think that how can an HOA make me pay 20K? I'm not paying them. <laughs> you would be surprised at how much power HOAs have and how ridiculous they can be and how annoying and a pain in the you know what they can really be. <laughs> Uh, it, uh, no joke, but let's take a look at this and look at what, how many people are in a HOA. Community associations, also known as home owners associated condominiums and housing cooperatives are home to 74.2 million Americans, representing 29% of US housing stock. That's a huge number guys, that is huge. And not only that guys, it says here, HOAs are popular with 82% of new single family homes sold in 2021 falling under under an HOA jurisdiction. So what does that mean? That means that 82 of new homes currently, right now, 82% of them will fall into HOAs. Good, good. So it's something that you cannot really avoid, that most people will not be able to avoid. But yet, we have HOAs that are basically have their own governance, right? Their own separated from the city. And we see this all the time and they're causing individuals to go into foreclosure. Get out of this house. They're causing individuals to have liens on their property and they're causing individuals while we're in a recession to pay tens, 20, 30, $40,000 in fees associated with things such as trees. But you don't have to take my word for it. Let's take a look at some of these atrocities. Dan and Yonita Ariton and his family have been living in their Yorba Linda home since 2021. And so far, it's been everything they've been looking for. We love it. Uh, we love the city. Um, we love the community. His home is part of the Yorba Linda Villages Condominium Association. Last month, Dan says the HOA's board unexpectedly increased their monthly dues by 20%, implemented a one-time special assessment, and will collect emergency fees to make repairs to the property. We all owe about nine, uh, around $9,000. What? <laughs> 
$9,000. Do you have $9,000? Subscribers, viewers, anybody? Do you have $9,000? That's a lot of high numbers that mean stuff. These HOAs are saying, Yeah, um, we're gonna do a special assessment on your house. They're paying for appraisals on your house. And let me guess, the value didn't go up. <laughs> <laughs> it did not go up. And then they're saying, oh, we need to do certain things around this area to fix it up. And they're using their contractors. They're not bidding out the cheapest, the individuals who can do the job the best, but at a valued deal, they're not doing that. They're using their own people. And then they're coming to you saying, yeah, we did an assessment on your property and uh, yeah, uh, we're gonna need 9,000 for it from you. But what happens if you can't pay that $9,000? Oh, you're in some trouble. <laughs> you think the cartel's gonna let you off with, on a payment plan? Nah, not, not, not the HOA system. Uh, depending on the square footage of our respective units on uh, March 15th. Dan says the HOA's emergency assessment will also add hundreds of dollars a month to what people owe over the next several years. Now, some residents are facing some tough decisions, including selling their homes. We're gonna have to move out with my parents. We're gonna, um, it's, um, well, there's just no way we can afford that much money a month. Brian Guillen bought his home in August 2020. Now that's sad because that is a situation where someone bought a home that was quote unquote affordable for them and then now they get hit with this big bill and it's unaffordable. Now they have to sell their home. Now, did this individual buy a home, you know, and overpay and whatnot? I don't know. But what I can tell you is whatever he paid for previously, it must have been affordable for him and his family. But as soon as the HOA comes in and says, you know, um, not only are we gonna charge you the 9K to do the repairs on the complex, but we're also going to assess values and then add on hundreds of dollars that you're gonna have to pay a month. Because as we do, do know with dues when it comes to HOAs, you pay them monthly. And no matter if you pay them annually in the year or you break them down monthly, they will add on these fees based on, at least this association will do it based on square footage and value of your home. No! Imagine this guys, imagine not only getting assessed by the HOA, but you're also getting assessed by the city. The city is doing their own assessment on your home, telling you, hey, your property is worth X, Y, Z, and this is what you're gonna have to pay in property taxes. Then the HOA come in right behind and say, hey, we did our own assessment, and our assessment says your house is worth more than what the city says. And now we need you to pay additional to what you are paying for the city. Does that make sense? What a load of crap. Does anybody else think this is a shakedown? Does anybody else think that there's something wrong with this? That it feels like they're taking advantage of people? I, I mean, to me, that's what it looks like. The first time homebuyer feels residents are being financially ambushed to buy the new fees. We thought we were buying an investment, uh, gaining equity and um, building on that, but it seems like it's that's not really gonna be the case anymore. We reached out to the Yorba Linda Villages HOA and Optimum Professional Property Management. They referred us to their legal counsel, but have not heard back. And here's the funny thing about that, guys. He thought, like he said, they were getting an investment, they were gonna get some equity, and it didn't turn out that way. Because now, not only if there are possibility of losing value based on what's happening with the economy, but now you have to pay this additional nine, 10, $12,000, and your monthly fees will go up on your HOA. Now you're in a situation where you can't afford it and now you have to sell that home. But now, look at this guys. Now you're in a situation where you're ending up in a situation where the credit crunch is happening, housing maybe in that particular area went up. So can you really afford, what are you gonna do with this excess? What if you're selling your home and the value is less and you're underwater? Now are you stuck? Are you forced to go into foreclosure? Are you forced to lose your home when the value isn't there anymore? When you thought, hey, I was gonna be in this home for 10 years, but now I have to sell it because I have to come up with 10K that the cartel is asking me for. Where my money? <laughs>
<laughs> it's nuts, guys. It's nuts. And this is a situation that I want you guys to look at before you get into these situations where you overpay and put yourself in a financial scenario. And I'm not saying that this is the fault of this individual that we're just watched, because it's not. It's the HOA that comes in is saying to these individuals, yeah, we have to do this. And let's take a look at this also too, guys. Where are the legal fees gonna come from? I can almost guarantee you that the HOA will add the legal fees to the bill. $15,000. So you fight them, and then they put the legal fees on top of what you already owe. The bill can go from 9,000 all the way to 20, from 20 to 30, to 30 to 40, from 40 to 50, in a blink of an eye, guys. I am above the law. And I know some of you guys are like, Orlando, quit being so hard on the HOAs, which I hope you're not. <laughs> <laughs> Which I hope you're not, because these HOAs, man, they're habitual line steppers. <laughs> they are, man. They will complain on you, eat you up with fees. Oh, you, you didn't do this. You didn't do that. Just shut the hell up. Wow, okay. I mean, give me a break. They will do this, guys, and they will ruin. They can take home ownership from a great thing and turn it into a nightmare. Turn it into a nightmare. But guys, listen, I know some people are like, Orlando, quit being so hard on the HOAs. And I would say, if HOAs are so good, why are they stopping people from improving their property? You don't believe me? I mean, let, let's take a look at the footage. <laughs> Here's a view of those solar panels from the street, the focus of a lawsuit brought by the Orchards Homeowners Association of Belleville. Jennifer Bossler and her husband Mark live here. We wanted to reduce our carbon footprint and take care of things, you know, help the environment as much as possible. And so this is something we had thought about for a while. They had solar panels professionally installed October 2020, despite HOA rules that say they can only be in the back. They wanted maximum efficiency, and they and their attorney believe they were protected by an Illinois law. <laughs> so you're telling me I'm trying to save electricity, and the HOA goes, no, Orlando, you can't do that. No, homeowner, don't you dare try to save electricity. Hey, you're trying to get rid of a carbon footprint, and you're trying to make the environment better? Don't you dare do that, homeowner. Don't you dare do that. Matter of fact, we're gonna come after you because we have a rule that says that you can't put panels on front of the house. But, but that rule goes against the state law of Illinois. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't get any cartelish than that, then I don't know what to tell you. The cartel goes in and goes, yeah, we know what the law is, but we're gonna do what we wanna do. I mean, you just can't make this up. Well, it seems like the only thing that you could do to get rid of the HOAs is you got to hire a lawyer, right? You got to hire a lawyer, have them go after them, and the HOA will leave you alone, right? Well, we'll see. <laughs> it's called the Homeowners Energy Policy Statement Act. And usually when I get involved in situations like this, it's simply a matter of educating the HOA about what that law provides for. Mm. And in every instance in the past, they've just said, oh, okay. And that's the end of it. Uh, in this instance, um, they insisted that they would be able to enforce their policy. Wow. So now the HOA doubles down on this couple and says, yeah, we're going to go the distance. We're going to take this to trial. <laughs> they are going to double down and charge the legal fees onto the homeowner. And let me tell you this, guys. You take an HOA to, to court, you go through the legal system, you can bet your bottom dollar that they are going to be on top of you if they lose. Not only if they lose, but while they're going through it, they're gonna make sure they're gonna say your trash can is in the driveway. The type of siding that you got, we only allow one brand of siding. You know, the things hanging up on, on your on your door. We don't allow wreaths on doors, guys, you know. So so you either get rid of the wreath or we're charging you a thousand dollars a day. <laughs> this is bullshit. Do you guys not understand this racket? It sounds so ridiculous. Me actually doing this video, it just sounds so ridiculous that any of this stuff is allowed, but it is. There are no rules. And I know what a lot of you guys say, Orlando, they're not that petty. HOA being so petty where they're gonna fee you to death over the most ridiculous things. Let's take a look at this situation of what a HOA is finding a homeowner. I, I love these trees. Just over a year ago, Pat Fitzgerald planted two magnolias in front of his Merritt Island home. 
the same kind of trees that line much of the rest of the River Grove subdivision. His homeowners association fined him a hundred dollars a day until the total reached five thousand dollars. I have to take the two trees up um, in 20 days and they won't find me five thousand dollars. The problem is not the presence of the tree or even the type of tree. This tree for example is okay. The problem is the height. The other two are too small. What? <laughs> the height of the tree? And this is what I'm talking about guys when it comes to the pettiness of an HOA. Oh look, your height of your tree is it is too too small. How do you expect the tree to get bigger? It grows. <laughs> A tree grows, you know, you plant it and then it grows. I mean, does that make any sense? You want me to go buy a tree that's, that's 10 foot tall and it planted in the ground? What, what do you expect? <laughs> this is ridiculous. And they're gonna charge my man five grand, five grand for that. Insane. Pay me my money. <laughs> but this is what I'm talking about when it comes to these HOA. You know, in some situations, they're the devil. They really are. Well, in most cases. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's true. And I know what a lot of you guys are saying. You know what, Orlando? I'm not doing that. There's no way. There's no way that I'm going to plant some new trees and take them out, get get the right side. They can find me the 5,000. I'm not doing it. Well, that would be a mistake. <clears throat> because HOAs have a governance where they can foreclose on you. I know. Sounds nuts. Let's take a look at it. Maisha had fallen behind on a lot of her bills, but she said she'd work something out with the mortgage company. But this was the HOA, and I had no idea that an HOA could foreclose on you. Maisha's foreclosure lawsuit did not come from her mortgage company. It came from her HOA. It's called the Timbers Homeowners Association 1. And when she saw the amount the HOA said she owed, it was way more than she expected. I didn't know it had gotten that bad. With the late fees and then they would charge interest, it just kind of kept snowballing. This started a legal fight with the HOA that has lasted more than four years. No, I know what you're thinking. Orlando, that doesn't sound like an HOA. That sounds like a collection agency. And um, you would be right. <laughs> what type of shadiness does an organization like that really have their hands in? Sounds like loan sharking or, you know, debt collection. You know, just like I said, the cartel. <laughs> <laughs> They're a gang who will push and push and they have this guise of, hey, you know what? We're trying to keep your property values correct. We're trying to make sure your property values go up, but you're not allowed to do anything. You gotta have the right tree brands. You gotta have the right size trees. You can't hang anything on your door. You gotta have the right type of siding by a certain brand. Everything has to be done by a certain, you know, guideline or whatnot. And even in some situations, the HOA will break its old guidelines, but that's okay. They can do it because they're the organization. <laughs> As a joke, I mean, but foreclosing on someone's home just because they haven't paid HOA fees sounds crazy, right? But they can do it. They could put liens. They could put foreclose on your home and then take your property away from you, kick you out of it because that's what you signed up for. Your soul is mine. And this is the point of this video, is to make sure that before you sign on these dotted lines, before you overpay for a home, before you think I'm getting the best deal that I possibly can in this neighborhood because of the school district and all this other stuff, make sure that you take a look at the HOA. Now I know most people just abandon the HOA and they think, oh, I'll just pay my fee. But you really do need to take a look at this stuff because you don't want to end up in a situation like some of these people where you have to pay nine, ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 over because of a situation that the HOA wants to do a money grab. But the ridiculousness doesn't stop there, guys. It doesn't. You would think to yourself, how are they finding all these violations? Are they driving around like Google Maps and, 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 and looking at every house every day? Well, <laughs> now that you brought it up. 
One of the reasons I purchased my home is because I didn't have to uh, buy a shed after purchasing the house. It was already there. Three years after buying this property, the Henrys received a letter from their homeowners association. Saying that they were doing an audit and they noticed that I had a shed in my backyard and it wasn't approved by my homeowners association. Gavin, who was a disabled veteran, told the HOA the shed was there before he bought the property and none of his neighbors have ever complained. That's when he was told it was now his responsibility to remove or change it or else. Put a lien on my house. So you're telling me the HOA gave this man a violation and put a lien on his property because of a shed that was previously there before, before he purchased it. And when he purchased it, now he's got to tear down that shed and then put a new shed that is underneath their guidelines, which has to do with brand, size, and location of your yard. Do you really even own the property? Get it straight, Buster. I'm not here to say please. I'm here to tell you what to do. I mean, that's kind of what it sounds like to me. But the real question is, the property is fenced. So the question is, is how can they see what's in the backyard? That was only the beginning of his problems. Since you can't see this shed from the front yard and no one came knocking at the Henry's front door, they asked their homeowners association how they were able to perform an audit. That's when they were told over the phone that Google Maps was used to scope out their backyard. What? <laughs> Uh, HOA is tech savvy, right? They're tech savvy now. They are looking at Google Maps Satellite Edition <laughs> to find out exactly what's in your backyard. Isn't that some privacy rule that's broken there? And don't you think you do a little bit too much HOA? If you're doing all of that to find violations, it sounds like you're looking to find violations and charge someone. This is America. <laughs> Got you slipping up. Do you need more money in your piggy bank fund, your lush fund to suck out of people? So you're going to Google Maps to find violations? It's tough, guys. <laughs> Uh, and this man has to deal with a lien on his property or get rid of his shed. A disabled veteran. Ugh. That ain't right. Shame on you. It's sad. It's sad. This is the point that I'm trying to knock home with you guys. To let you guys know, an organization like HOAs, even though most people dislike them, most people are annoyed with them. They're in 82% of single family homes that were sold in 2021, also 2022, and probably it will increase in 2023, guys. So this is something that you guys need to know and know exactly how far these HOAs can reach. They're their own governance outside of the city that they can do what they want. And my point of this video is for you to understand and make sure you look at all of this stuff before you go in and you jump into buying a brand new home and paying over value think of these things through and know all of your options up front so once again i hope you got enjoyment out of this video i had a blast making this video i really did i really did you won't get all of your information from this one video i need you to watch this next video here get you information about the housing market financial news get into your first rental property and i promise you the information you will get from it will be gold thanks